this is Bino. Um, and today what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about a tie-in, a final tie-in to a tree. Just go over some of the basic concepts of it. Okay, so um, what, I, what I plan to do is to go up and um, put in a final tie-in. So a general rule of thumb for that is to have a four inch diameter main stem. That's a stem that goes upward. And then the ones that are um, on the lateral, it really doesn't matter so much the size, but it's in the way that you, you install it. So what I, what I have here is a diameter tape. What a diameter tape does, it, it, it's already calculated out. You know, there's pi, it's like a 3.14. Um, you measure it normally, but this is already has the equation in it. So all you have to do is put your tape around it and it shows you what four inches is. Uh, I normally would never take a diameter tape up, but I just wanted to give a good idea what four inches looks like. And, and that's a general rule of thumb. Four inches isn't the, definitely has to be. I mean, it, it depends on the trees that you climb, like the different strengths of different trees, like an oak is super strong. So it could be smaller than a four inch. Anyhow, the, the plan today is to go up, give you an idea what a tie-in looks like. Okay, so now I'll break out the diameter tape and we'll see how, what the diameter of this uh, tie-in is. Okay, so here's how it works. This space right here is already given. This is one diameter width, two. So I'll first of all to do is I'll go around the tree and see what it is at this point. So right here, it's almost a five inch diameter. So then I'll look at the one above it and see, this is a good open crotch, and even that. When you're doing it, you want to find a wider crotch and something that's not so tight, because as your rope goes through it, it binds on it. If it's a real tight crotch, it's not the best situation. Okay, so this is what a, a general rule of thumb, about that thick, so a four inch diameter. And so when you're doing a, a tie-in, the important part, is that you're not going to tie it to something like this. So if this branch, like if you put your rope here and this branch broke off, you're just going to fall completely straight to the ground. The idea is like on this, on this one right here, this is actually a small limb, but if my rope snapped, I'll fall from here to here. So the same kind of thing I'll do is once I, uh, I'll say this would be a better tie in here than this piece right here. So let me uh, take the rope off real quick and I'll put it where in the better spot. So this is an Afrocarpus, I guess Falcata, they changed the name, it's a Podocarpus gracilior. These guys are really strong. So this would be like rule of thumb, final tie-in right here. Perfect. Now if this branch broke, I would get hung up on a branch below it. And if that branch broke, I'd get um, stopped by this. The thing that I wouldn't want to do is put it on this, and you know, if it broke, it, I'd fall off. But see, I would even be comfortable on this size, and I think that's probably like, that might be like a, let me see, a three inch diameter? Yeah, it's about a three inch diameter limb. So even like this, so this is pretty solid. It's kind of a tight crotch, so maybe it might hinder me if, as, as I'm going up. You know how this, this slides, it might be kind of tight there. This might be a little bit better. Um, not a whole lot of tree up above me, so I mean, I could probably get what I needed to with, with pole equipment. Uh, maybe I'll just call this the final tie-in. Okay, so uh, now that I got my final tie-in, what I think I'll do is just walk around a little on this tree and uh, show um, maybe what the vertical um, rope will do, you know, 
having a vertical line will take weight off the branches you're walking on. The more horizontal, then you have more weight on the branches, so it can make them like uh, bend more and maybe even possibly break. So what I'll do is walk on some smaller limbs and hopefully have a real good uh, vertical angle or so uh, I can show how it helps um, to have a good tie-in point. Now this is a tiny little branch right here. And so when I'm standing on this little branch here, you can see that it's only like a two inch limb. And having this angle, it really won't let that branch break. Now, more horizontal, I might even snap that, that branch. Let me see, I'm gonna go over here. All right. Oops. Okay. There. So see, uh, these are kind of small branches. See it bowing and bending, but majority of the weight is, is on the, the tie-in point. So go step back over. And go back down a little. Now even this branch is kind of bowing under my weight, but because of this tie-in point, it's more likely not going to break. So now that I got to this point, I was looking up and I was noticing there's a limb and it's only like two feet lower than my final tie-in, but let's say that limb was 10 feet lower and my tie-in point was, you know, 10 feet higher. So that reduced my it's going to reduce my angle when I decide to climb around, you know? So, and just say the, the up to the point of that branch is say another 20 feet higher than me. So a lot of times you'd have to go climb up to it. But um, what you could do, instead of that, you could uh, send your, uh, your, your climbing system up over that crotch and bring it back down to you so you wouldn't have to climb that whole distance. Let's see here. So, what you could do is give yourself some slack. You'll tie a slip knot above your, your climbing line. Just make that set so it's not going to run on you. Take your carabiner off. connected to there. Now this is a line that was over the branch. Basically all you got to do is pull this line up over the crotch and bring it back to yourself. Oops. There you go. Get it over the crotch Now bring it back down. There you go. Now that would save your tie-in point. So your final tie-in would be the full length that you wanted. Let's put that back on. Undo your slip knot. And connect out back to yourself. Snug your rope back up. So now you'd have your, your full tie-in point again. And then you could go out and do your walk. You know, it was if just say if it was like about 10 foot lower, then that would have really ruined your, your vertical angle. So. so I thought I would go over on what my path would be on, say, a tree like, like this one here. So I'd, I'd walk up, and it's a broad canopy tree. It's, it's pretty huge. So I'd look up, and I'd go to the center, and where this circle is, that would be my first starting point. So uh, what I would do is I'd work my way up to that, but off to the left here, I would consider a secondary tie-in point and a third tie-in point off to the right. So on my way up to the starting point, I would pay attention to those branches, just make sure that they're good solid branches, no defects, and I'd you know scan the area for pests, you know something that might attack me. So once I get to my main starting point, this area. I could um, pretty much trim this whole section. Now from there I would go downward 
and I would work my way to the second dairy tie-in point. And once I get to that secondary, I could work this whole section. And then from there, I would lose the secondary tie-in. I'm still keeping my starting tie-in point. I'll work my way to the third. Once I get to that third tie-in point, it, um, with that tie-in point, I could work this whole section over here with um, this one tie-in point. And after that, then I would, you know, pretty much have most of the tree completed. And then I'd work my way back down. We just went over a uh, final tie-in. Um, I just want to mention it is important to make sure that what you're tying into is a good solid branch. If there's a lot of decay in it, it's not something you want to do um, to tie into. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've got an Instagram. Hopefully you guys can check it out, Bino H Climbing. Um, comment, like, and subscribe. Take care.